speak, like speaking of the 49ers, are you like I said, do you watch them now? Or are you yeah. big playing? Like, so you you know the whole roster and like you know, where do you think they're headed for like next year, the next couple of years? Yeah, I, I think Teal, uh JJ, uh, I think we should come out of retirement. <laughs> <laughs> you saying they need receiver help? <laughs> guys, I'm gonna tell you, you know, with with, with today's football, I mean yeah. the ball being in the air the majority of the time. Every play. Uh, how players are protected now and all that stuff. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Oh, but, yeah. you know, watching uh, Debo Samuel, uh, Kittle, all of that, then I think we just got Brandon Ayuk. Yeah. I think Ayuk, yeah. I hope I'm pronouncing his name the right way. Uh, but, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, the young rookie is going to come in. He's going to play well. Uh, very physical off the line of scrimmage. Can make any catch. Can stretch the field. The only thing that I want to see more of him is him, for him to use his hands more. Mm-hmm. He has the tendency to let the ball get into his body. And also he has problems with a little bit of bump and run. But, uh, you know, I, I think I, I still watch it. I still support it. But it's a whole different ball game now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So, and I think when you talk about uh, a number of the receivers that are, that are playing today, I mean, obviously, like I said, the difference in the game – versus now versus when we played is obviously, like I said, just they've taken a lot of hits uh, out of the game, uh, a lot of the physical parts, especially when it, as it relates to uh, receivers. Um, and when you think about the receivers today, you know, who are you guys is probably like top two or three receivers um, that you feel like you, you feel like are similar to our style uh, of play? And how do you feel that the guys you know, that are coming into the league now, how they will fare out? Uh, in the league, you know, coming obviously from from college, and then you know, getting their uh, getting themselves uh, ready for uh, the, the the pro level. Yeah, you know, my my guy would be uh, you know just like you guys, uh, you and JJ uh, probably would be Julio Jones. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, Julio Jones got it all, man. He, yep. I know he's fast, he's physical, uh, he can run. Every route, you know, he's explosive. After catching the ball, he can, you know, uh, you know, go 75 yards, 80 yards or something like that after the catch. And that's what, to be honest, to be honest you don't really see a lot of guys doing that now. You no. don't see a lot of guys taking the anywhere from the line of scrimmage to five yards, taking those routes and taking it to the house. Like you said, 60, 70, 85 yards oh. down the field. You don't really see that nowadays. And I think when you talk about the West Coast offense, which is where I was like where I was brought up, that was that was one of the staple things that they talked about is taking the short pass, taking it the long distance. Yeah, of course, everybody can run the deep routes, uh, the go routes. You can run the over routes and things of that nature. But that's what I think is missing and what separates our era of, of the game versus this era. And I'm sure, like JR said, there's some truth to what he's saying. I'm pretty sure we, if we were given a, an opportunity to play, we could play at this level. Could we play 60, 75, 80 snaps? Probably not. But we could be productive in this era of the game. Do you guys watch the draft at all for like this uh, the rookies coming out? More so the, the fact that they said there were so many receivers. I wanted to see how, how that played out. Uh, I was interested in that and also the quarterbacks because everybody has their opinion on on which quarterback was the best and, and, and who should do what. But, um, yeah, I always look at the quarterbacks and uh, and uh, and the receivers and other positions that that have somebody that stands out that I'm like, man, I want to see what he's going to turn out to. But most of the time right. I'm looking at the quarterbacks and receivers. Yeah, for me, receivers, you know, Jerry Judy, also C.D. Lamb. Uh, Brandon, uh, are you, I, yeah, I think the Niners traded down to the 25th spot to, uh, to pick him. But it was so many receivers. But, uh, you know, I, I was pretty much impressed, too, with, uh, you know, uh, with the NFL, the draft, not having any problems and, and stuff yeah. like that. And, and it being on Zoom and everything went just, you know, uh, it was perfect. Well, you, yeah, you guys I, play. You guys play with Steve Young, so all three. You is two of the next Steve Young, in you guys' opinion. Well, let me let me chime in because I, I, mm-hmm. I worked out with Tua his freshman year, like he was a true freshman. So I, uh, Alabama has this camp where they do every yeah in college every summer. So uh, my son and my two nephews were at that at that camp, and so I just went to the camp just to kind of just check out, check in on them. And so after the camp, I think it was uh, the last day. So after the camp, you know, uh, Calvin Ridley was out there, dude, uh, Sims, um, 
Jerry Judy, I think he might have been like a sophomore or whatever at that time. These guys, they were like, man, it's like T.O., he's like, run some routes with us. And I'm like, tell them, like, I have no gear, I have no nothing. They're like, oh, we'll get you some shoes. We'll get you. So they literally got me all that I needed to, to go outside and, and run routes. And so before uh, Tua was even available, we they wanted to throw with Jalen Hurts because Jalen Hurts was the quarterback at the, the starting quarterback at the time. So they couldn't find Jalen. So they was like, yo, they're like, we got Tua coming. And then I'm like, all right, cool. And then they's like, yo, they's like, he's like, they's like, dog, he's the real deal. They's like, he can probably start right now. But they's like, they got, you know, Jalen's our starter. And I'm like, really? So they're like, all right, they just, it's like, just wait till you see him. So I'm like, all right. So he comes out. He wasn't as tall as I thought it, you know, thought he was going to be. Hawaiian kid, left-handed or whatever. So we're out there running routes. We was out there for like an hour and a half. Guys, this is no lie. This dude was so impressive, dude. When I left there, I was like, oh, my gosh. This was him as a freshman. This was like three years ago. I was like, this dude. Is, I said, this dude, I said, honestly, I told um, one of their guys, I said, dude, this is crazy to me. I said, dude, this dude could probably play in the league right now with what I saw. This is no lie. JR, he hit every route. I'm talking about, when you're talking about, on, like, I literally, when I was running my routes, I was envisioning and I saw Steve Young throwing the ball to me. The only pass that I corrected him on, and I, I, it wasn't an incompletion, it was the bang eight. When I came out of my bang eight, I saw him throw the ball, everything, and I ended up catching it so, like, on my hips. So when I came back to him, I said, Tua, I said, dude, I said, on this bang eight, I said, I don't know how, I don't know what your steps are, whatever the case may be. I said, but I know we're running routes on air. I said, but I want you to get in the habit of when we run these routes, I want you to take like games, game drops, game steps. I want you to visualize the defense. I said, because when I'm running this bang eight, I said, it's, it's eight steps to it. I said, but on my fourth outside step, that ball should be out of your hand at least halfway to me. I shouldn't see the ball thrown. That was the only correction that I made with this young kid at that time. And when I saw – and when after that game, and obviously if you, you fast forward, he ended up coming in at halftime and winning the game when, uh, <laughs> yeah. when, when Jalen went out. I'm on, yeah. the sideline, I'm on the sideline of this championship game. I'm on the sideline talking to a guy. Jalen struggled. Everybody knows that. They were down 13-0. to zero. They go in at halftime. I had my boy call me on the sideline. I had a little friendly $200 bet with him. He said, yo. <laughs> he said – so he, he calls me. He, everybody sees when uh, when Alabama gets the ball, Tua goes into the game. The crowd starts like like erupting. My phone rings. My boy said, "Oh, y'all definitely gonna lose now." I'm like, "Why do you say that?" He said, "I said, dude, trust me. This game is about to change." He said, "What?" He said, "Better another hundred." I said, "Okay, cool. Might I remind you now? Might I remind you?" They're down 13 to zero at halftime, and I make this bet because I had seen him do what he did that summer. So I yeah. already knew what was about to happen and what the world is about to see once he un once once these Miami Dolphins unveil and 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 Tua gets fully healthy, they're gonna see exactly what I'm talking about and what they saw that night on championship night when he came in 13-0 down and he ended up bringing them back to win the championship.